Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. They are, believe me. The master's a puppet. The master, master, let's get master. What a great group, okay. Wonderful. A lot of noise out there. All right, master, master. What you don't know is this. Most of the biggest liberals in America are actually mentally disturbed. Uh, a friend of mine who knows very big liberals, I'm talking the biggest in the, in, the, in the world, has told me they really don't care. Politically, they don't care one way or the other. They do it to meet girls and to, to make money. I said, I've known that all along. And he said, Michael, you jokingly say liberalism is a mental disorder. He said, almost every liberal I know is on medication. They're mentally ill. Welcome to the Savage Nation. I don't want to do the uh, NFL thing again. I did it better than anyone in the history of the media on Monday. It was linked on the Drudge Report for a day. I mean, the traffic was awesome. You can still find it on michaelsavage.com. But before I go on to the real stories that I want to talk about, such as NFL's uh, tax scam, did you know that the NFL is a $14 billion non-profit? Did you know the NFL is a tax scam organization? We're going to talk about all the scams that the NFL uses to get away without paying one dime in taxes. And then we're going to talk about the death of Hugh Hefner. Is he a hero or a villain? Did he destroy or help marriages? What is Hugh Hefner's real legacy? We're going to discuss that as well. Oh, I have other topics I want to get to. Oh, many other topics. A Harvard Law grad sued, you're not going to believe this, sued the New York bar exam causing about, you know, talking about lawyers. I told you they were, the pox of the nation are lawyers. Shakespeare had it right. Everyone understands the lawyers have destroyed America. Everyone understands that without tort reform, the nation is crippled forever. A Harvard Law grad is suing the New York bar exam, saying she wasn't accommodated properly. Now, hold on now. Tamara Witch, Witch, W-Y-C-H-E, not W-I-T-C-H. Tamara Witch claims the New York State Board of Law Examiners violated the Americans with Disabilities Act for failing to grant the accommodation she needed. Are you ready for this? For her anxiety and cognitive deficits. In other words, she's stupid. She has cognitive deficits, so she's stupid, in other words. That's what cognitive deficits means. You're stupid. I mean, in my day and age, if you, if you had cognitive deficits, you were dumb, and you went in the dumb class. You didn't slow the whole class down. Do you know why we have very few kids who excel today? Because they're considered the outcasts. Every benefit in every school is given for the outcasts. No. They're given for the dummies and the miscreants. So we'll talk about the Harvard Law grad suit that alleges a lack of bar exam accommodations, which destroyed her big law career. You're not going to believe this. It's un it gets worse. But before I do any of that, there's a great cartoonist named Ben Garrison. You may have seen him on Infowars. He's terrific. So he did a whole new panel of NFL teams renamed. And here's the names he came up with. The Pittsburgh Kneelers. The Carolina Concussions. <laughs> The Cleveland Reds with a star and hammer and sickle on their on their jerseys. The Seattle Snowflakes. The Denver the Denver Virtue Signalers. The Indianapolis Ingrates. The Tennessee Tantrums and the San Francisco Pinky Niners. <laughs> so yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Do you want to hear about my day off? I'll give you my day off. Off the air. I take a ferry into San Francisco because it was a calm, quiet. Really hot day. So I go on the ferry, you know, I figured one, I haven't done it in years. Minding my own business, no one knows me. Most people don't listen to radio, as you well know. And by the way, this is something that most talk show hosts need to do more. They actually have to get out from behind their mics, behind their bodyguards, behind their studios, behind their golf streams where they pretend that they're men of the people, and actually go out amongst the people to see why there's such a small audience of people who listen to talk radio compared with the major media. 
They don't even know what's going on. So luckily, they don't know who I am. I didn't have Teddy with me, so I was unrecognized. Had I had Teddy with me, it would have been another story. Everyone recognizes Teddy. Me, they don't know. That's why I'm in radio. So I'm on the boat, minding my business. The boat's pulling into San Francisco. So this kind of pudgy guy with a wrinkled shirt hanging out of his pants, a real slob, and the deckhand start to talk about Trump. And the deckhand says to the, to the slob, boy, I hope that Trump backing the wrong guy in Alabama is an indicator of what's coming during the midterm elections. I said, all right, here we go again. So the pudgy guy starts in with one word or another, and I don't know why. I mean, I didn't like what I was hearing, but they were talking very loud about politics, assuming that they were in a safe space, meaning that everyone agrees with their left-wing fanaticism. I wanted to let these people know that there are people amongst them who don't agree with them. So I, you know, I, you know, stuck my nose into the conversation without yelling. And one word led to the other, and the pudgy guy says that Judge Roy Moore is a fascist, the guy who won, the guy who Trump didn't back. So I said, what do you mean he's a fascist? The man is a constitutionalist. What do you mean a fascist? I said, you mean if you back the Constitution, you're a fascist? And he says with a superior attitude, you know he was a New York type. No, he said, he puts his Christian beliefs above everything. So I said, you must be a communist then, because you hate Christians, right? You hate all religion? What do you mean I'm a communist? I'm not a communist. I don't want to talk to you, he said. I said, who are you? Are you, are you? Who are you? What have you actually done? So he says, I'm a lawyer. I said, I could have guessed that. I said, I've written books on the subject. Judge Roy Moore is not a fascist. He says, I don't give a damn what you've written. I know what's going on. I said, oh, you know what's going on? What, you're a lawyer, a communist lawyer, so you know everything? Now, you have to understand this far in the conversation. It confirmed everything I've ever known about left-wing lawyers is that they think they know everything. I said, hey, buddy, you're not in a courtroom right now. You don't own the jury. You don't own the judge. You're talking to a stranger, and you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Judge Roy Moore is a fabulous American. So one word led to the other, and as he's getting off, he has to throw a judge. Ju you know, I said, you're just a shyster. I said, you're a lawyer? What are you, a shyster lawyer? Is that what you are? And that was a loaded statement. I wanted to provoke him. I said, what kind of lawyer are you, some low-grade shyster that you have time to be on a ferry in the middle of the day? He didn't answer me. So as he's getting off, he throws a jibe at me. He says to the deckhand, he says, I guess you have to sell tickets to anyone on these ferries. I said, yeah, even shysters. At which point I departed the boat. I had to have the last word. I hope he's seething all night long. I hope he had to take a double dose of Prozac at night for having lost the argument because he wasn't in a court of law. But on to the show today. This is the Savage Nation. NFL is a $14 billion business getting massive tax breaks. You have to die. Thank God I hope he's gone to his reward in hell where he belongs because he was a pornographer by any name. Now, he was a fabulous businessman, but a pornographer nevertheless. He was a little less graphic than the one uh, who created, what was that called? The guy who got shot in the groin and is in a wheelchair ever since, Larry Flint. Larry Flint came along and upgraded the pornography from the smooth, silk, airbrushed woman to something a little more graphic. But nevertheless, it's pornography. So he said, what's wrong with pornography? Well, let's talk about Playboy. The man affectionately known as Hef created and guided the Playboy brand for half a century, helping to usher in the freewheeling 60s and making a mark on that decade's significant effect on movies, TV, and pop culture. It's only fitting that Hugh Hefner planned to be buried in Westwood Memorial Park next to his fellow mid-century icon of sexual freedom, Marilyn Monroe. Blah, blah, blah. Born in Chicago, Hefner was a writer for a military newspaper while in the U.S. Army, then went to work as a copywriter for Esquire magazine. Determined to create a better publication, he launched Playboy in 1953 for $600. The first issue featuring a nude photo of Monroe was a big hit selling 53,000 issues. Now, this is written on Newsmax, by the way, on Hefner. Providing a counterpoint to the repressive climate of the era. Listen to that line. Repressive climate of the era. In other words, when a man was a man, when a woman was a woman, when couples basically stayed, mar stayed married, 
when pornography was considered a crime, when perverts were put in prison. That was called a repressive climate. Have you walked around San Francisco now in the free San Francisco? I did yesterday. You could puke. You need a clothespin on your nose. The bums are everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. They're human rats. That's all I could think of is they're human rats laying around in the streets and no one could do anything about it. And if you look at a human rat the long way, not only can you get killed, you could go to jail if you defend yourself. That's a result of the non-repressive climate of San Francisco's backyard. So anyway, here's my feelings. You're asking me what I feel about, about Playboy. You say, eh, what did he really do that was wrong? I'll tell you my position. By creating a fantasy image of women that were not real, it destroyed a lot of men. Because when they met real women, actual women, who were human beings, men were in some ways actually frightened of women, young boys particularly, who used Playboy for a fantasy. Now, you have to understand that human beings are not images in magazines. But when you condition a young boy to think that a girl should be the way the girls were, let us say, portrayed by Hugh Hefner, naturally they're going to be a little shocked to find out that a human being is different than a piece of uh, magazine, a magazine uh, a page, right? So I think it's wrecked, it wrecked a lot of boys. It made a lot of boys confused about women, unable to be with women, unable to live with women, unable to relate to women. And what did it do to women as they were uh, objectified and sexualized in Playboy? I'm asking you a simple question. What is Hugh Hefner's true legacy? Is he a hero or is he a villain? Do you think he destroyed or helped marriages? It's a very important question for one reason. He is a cultural icon, and he must be remembered in the proper context, not the way the psychopaths in the legal industry or the PR industry, which controls what you think, tell you to think. So what do you think? Question number two. Well, it's not a question. It's a comment number two. I have a long story from the Daily Signal on the NFL tax breaks. Here's how much money the NFL rakes in from taxpayers by Jarrett Stepman, a great piece of work. I linked it up on michaelsavage.com, and he writes this. The kneeling fiasco may open the eyes of the public to a serious and generally unchecked issue. Billionaire NFL owners sponging enormous amounts of money from taxpayers through crony capitalist schemes. Did you know that, that a business that raked in $14 billion in revenue in 2016 is heavily subsidized? by local, state, and federal money based on dubious claims about stimulating the economy? The problem is rampant. One report on Watchdog.org said that over the past two decades, the NFL has raked in about $7 billion of taxpayer money to spend on stadium renovation and building. Did you know any of that? Another study from the Brookings Institution showed that federal taxpayers have subsidized the construction of 36 stadiums at a cost of over $3.2 billion since 2000. There's a lot for you to learn about this, to realize that not only do communities gain almost no economic benefits from subsidized sports teams, but some findings indicate harmful effects of sports on per capita income, wage and salary disbursements, and wages per job. And now you know the rest of the story. I'll be right back on Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Well, it's beginning, the owner of an historic U.S. clothing company has pulled ads from NFL games. Let's have a round of applause for a patriotic American. That's right, Alan Jones, CEO of Hardware Clothing and Check Into Cash Payday Loan Company. See, he just got free time for that. Announced on Tuesday, he's through with sponsoring the wardrobes and advertising on the National Felons League. Hardware Clothing is America's oldest suit maker. They should advertise in the Savage Nation. In his statement, Jones said, our, comp our companies will not condone unpatriotic behavior. Can you believe this? Isn't this great? And he owns a lending chain called Check Into Cash, an owner of Hardware Clothes. Uh, my uh, ad salesman should call immediately. 
We should get all of those who are leaving the NFL. You see, because we're boycotted. You don't know that. It's a secret about talk radio that those on the right, those of us who are patriotic, those of us who are Americans, those of us who do not support Sharia law, those of us who do not support the communist socialist slash agenda of the leftist fanatics, we are boycotted by the ad agencies. So you understand what's going on here. There's actually a, there could be a silver lining to what the NFL, um, the dumb players are doing, the fake players are doing. What idiots they are. How can anyone believe they're oppressed minorities? Are you joking? Are you people stupid? They're oppressed minorities making $16 million a year? Okay, but we've done this Monday and Tuesday. I don't want to do it again. I want to do something that no one else is doing in radio. I don't want to repeat what someone else did three minutes ago. Hefner's legacy, Playboy magazine, is he a hero or a villain? Did he help the image of women or decimate women? Did he help or destroy marriages? Everyone listening to this show has an answer to that question. The phone number is 855-407-282. Jeff on KSFO, what's your opinion? Yeah, Dr. Savage, I respectfully agree and disagree at the same time. Uh, as a young man, I didn't have a father around to really teach me about women. or So I looked at these magazines, and it kind of allowed me to get to know women without having to necessarily go find a porno movie or something like that. So I was able to look at these magazines and have them on my table, in my room as a kid, and it was something that I was allowed to have. So it empowered me in a way, but it also allowed me to get to know women in a, in a weird way. I read these articles, and you actually find stuff out about women. And then in conversations with women in my daily life, I was actually able to relate to girls using information I had read in these magazines. So it really worked out for me because I have a... Right, I'm, I'm not here to say you didn't. I'm here to listen. So I have a question for you. Did you have, have you had a successful marriage as a result? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Twelve years, I've had uh, no problem uh, respecting her wishes in terms of no pornography. She's really against uh, the the run. So the early use of the Stroke magazines didn't hurt you? Correct, sir. She was okay with it because they were semi-classy. Uh, but you're right. Like, there's no Hustler magazines in my house. So there was a level of... Okay, a quick question. Do you have, you have children? Would you let your boy read porno in, in the house? I don't know if porno or a Playboy magazine, because I kind of feel... Well, Playboy is pornography, that's all. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I'm through with the NFL for a while. It's so dumb, it's frightening. They're a bunch of ingrates, period, end of story. Don't tell me about a $16 million, you know, a victim. I'm sick of it. Just get over it already. Stop with the garbage. Now, number two, I want to talk about Hugh Hefner. He died. Hero or villain? Did he destroy or help marriages? What is his true legacy? I'd like especially to hear from women. Men have one view of it. We heard from one caller who said it actually helped him relate to women. But that was a standard trick of the pornographers of the 60s, which was you showed the women, and then you had a sort of intellectual article scattered throughout. So the guy could make believe he was buying it for the story. Standard trick. You know, you write a big, fancy article. You get the best writers of your time, Philip Roth, whatever, and they write this long intellectual thing, and in the midst of it is just basically porno. But meanwhile, the guy buying can make believe he bought it for the article. But he didn't buy it for the article. He went from joke books to stroke books in, the, you know, in a few years. That's what he bought it for. Come on, let's, let's stop fooling ourselves here. Let's not put icing on the cake here. What do you actually think? Margaret on KSFO Line 2, your opinion was who, you have to a, a hero or a villain? He's a villain. He's worse than Cosby. He, he uh, abused more women by far than Cosby. He had a supply of drugs. He called Quaaludes thigh spreaders. He had a doctor who was his buddy who would provide him all the tranquilizers. And wait, wait, wait. Hold it. He called Quaaludes what? Thigh spreaders. How did you find this out? Well, if you read the two books, one book was written by the daughter of the doctor who worked for him, and she was 15, and she had 
full run of the mansion. She saw people having sex. You know, she was a drug addict by the time she was 16, thanks to uh, Hugh and the doctor and her lifestyle. Then Holly Madison, she lived with him for quite a few years. And when she got mad at him because he wouldn't marry her, she wrote a tell-all a book about how her experiences and what drugs she was given and the drugs she saw being used and the attitude there. He, he's Ma Margaret, you know a lot about this, and I'm not trying to pry, but how are you related to this story? And, and you must be related in a, in a personal way. Well, I actually was going to apply as a Playboy bunny back in the 70s, but they wouldn't take any, you know, they wouldn't take you if you wore glasses. So I didn't actually go and apply. But I went to the club once on a date. Wait, so are you just a bitter Playboy bunny reject? Is that what we're hearing? <laughs> they didn't reject me. I didn't apply. So <laughs> I'm joking. Come on. I'm just asking you. Is this just a bitter Playboy bunny reject? So, okay, but you read about it afterwards and you found out that the guy was basically a sleazeball. Oh, many years later. You know, I thought, oh, isn't that cute and all that. So I wasn't wild about the nude thing. But, I mean, I wouldn't have posed. Well, you wanted to wear one of those cotton tails and wear a bikini and serve men drinks? Costume. You wanted to have the costume and, and, and serve men drinks? Costume. Not an original one, but I wear it. A you know, I'll bet you those Playboy girl bunny costumes are worth a fortune today. Well, I don't have the real one. I wish I did, but I just... Well, well you have a fake? You, you actually have a, du a duplicate? You said you bought a duplicate bunny costume? No, no, I made my own. I didn't... I oh, so you are sort of a bit of a fanatic on this issue. It's a Margaret, are you, are you a bit of a fanatic on this issue of, of you, Hefner? Oh, I hate the guy. I absolutely can't stand him. He uh, was very strange. He would only eat certain things. And when he went into a restaurant, the chef had to come out and he would tell him how he wanted his gravy made. And he yeah, sounds like my kind of guy. I, w I wish I could get a chef to come out and ask me how I wanted my gravy made. I don't think that's a <laughs> negative. He was a powerful man who got his way. But the question is, what effect does he add on society? Because he is an icon. And I'm just trying to establish from my audience uh, his legacy. Is he a hero or a villain? And we're hearing mixed images. I mean, the other guy said it helped him understand women. I don't believe that at all. Because how can you learn what a woman is by seeing naked pictures of them? Stacks of the magazine, I've read the old ones, and there is nothing in there to help you understand women. The magazine is about how to get girls to have sex with you. It's nothing to do with what women are like or how they think or feel. It doesn't matter because you're a playboy. It is the worst thing. I think that guy was totally off kilter, who you just talked to. Because there's nothing in that magazine that gives you any insights into who women are. Well, I agree with you on that. It, I, I didn't understand that at all. It gave no insights into who women are. I think what he was saying, the caller, is that by reading the so-called highbrow articles that were uh, you know, sprinkled throughout, he learned to have conversational points to bamboozle women with. Okay, I'll go with that. In other words, he read an article, let's say, by a writer, a famous writer. Right. So then when he was dating a woman, he could talk about that guy in that article. So in that sense, he gave, okay. he gave him a conversation. That's all. It's true. But, but that's assuming that the woman was smart enough to even know who he was talking about. Do you think the girls today know who writers are? Are you telling me the girls of today know much about literature, much about history, much about anthropology? What do they actually know? Twitter. Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Margaret, you seem to be, you're not calling from San Francisco, are you? No, I live in Sebastopol. You've talked to me before. Oh, Sebastopol. Don't get me started on that, on that clavin up there. That oh. was once a, bu a beautiful farming area. How did that become a witch's cauldron? Uh, conservative, you'll be mobbed and beat to death. Oh, because it's very tolerant. I know it's a very tolerant community. <laughs> They're so tolerant. You're not yeah, I think one of the biggest items that sell in the in the uh, female pharmacies up there are shavers. Shavers? Well, yeah, for all the beards that the women have uh, walking oh. in the streets up. <laughs> Nair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear Nair. Well, they did a demographic breakdown of the sale of Nair, and it's very high in Sebastopol. You're right about that. No, au contraire. It's cool if you're a woman to have a beard or hairy armpits. Are you kidding? That's, like, cool. <laughs> 
Margaret, it used to be a very, very sedate, Republican, conservative, apple-growing district, you know, 50 years ago, Sebastopol, right? Yeah. Well, do they, are they still allowed to grow apples, or is that considered to be phallic? Yes. They, I don't think they have any big growers, but individuals who've bought a few. No, but I'm saying sort of, with all the feminist fa- fanatics in Sebastopol, are apples considered too much of a phallic uh, fruit to be grown, or are they chopping down apple trees up there now? No, no. <laughs> okay, I'm pushing the metaphor too far. We're not drinking in a bar together. You're a great sport. Love hearing. How do you survive up there? I have to ask you. You're, wait, you're, 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 wait, you're a feminist who's conservative. How do you survive in that crazy community? Not there. Okay, that's all. We pushed it as far as we could. Uh, I have a half a migraine from the, from everything. So, no, I like this topic so far. I want pro and con. Was Hefner a hero or a villain? I want to know, really, honestly. I want to know from, I would really like to hear from women because guys could say one thing, but I want to know what women think about Hefner. Did he really help you with your relationships with men? Chris, KBOZ in Montana, line five. Your opinion counts. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi there. Um, I definitely see Hugh Hefner as more of a villain from a woman point of view. Um, he gave men a very unrealistic view on women. Our bodies don't always look like that. And especially if we are, um, well, having kids. <laughs> Which- okay, no, go on. No, go. This is very important. This is extremely important to get out in the public because the airbrushed woman is a burden upon women and upon men, but more particularly upon women. The airbrushed woman who does not want to have babies anymore for fear she will lose her little body. Ugh, kids are so much more important than the flat abs. I mean, I'm, I'm not a, I'm an, I would call myself an average woman. I have a very realistic body. I'm no, not. You didn't say you didn't say an average woman, did you? See, a average woman or average? Average. Oh, because because you're not an average woman. I get it. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I I just think I think it's hurtful. I think that many young women will look at things like Playboy and think, "My God, if I'm going to get." An, an awesome guy or a hot guy or a, any kind of guy at all that's worth anything, I have to look like this because this is what they think hot is. Yes, but that has given rise to cosmetic surgery of the most right. barbaric kind <laughs> where women have their hips cut off, literally cut off. I don't have to mention the breast augmentation, which is a well-known fact, but women are now mutilating their genitalia in this country. Did you know that? No. Oh, I don't want to go into details. It's a family show. <laughs> no, it is so. <laughs> all right, well, enjoy enjoy the pure, beautiful, clean air, of the big sky country of I, of Montana. Yeah. Are people still sane up in there in Bozeman, Montana, where you where you're listening? Uh, some of them. <laughs> Have you had a large influx of Portlandias and uh, Seattleites and San Franciscans? <laughs> A, a little bit, but honestly, I think I think Montana is pretty, for the most part. I think it's pretty even keel up here, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Well, I love your call. Thank you. So we had a normal woman call, an average normal American woman call on you Hefner's legacy. What do you think, women, men? I think this is a fabulous topic. It's more interesting to me than talking about the thugs who make sixteen million dollars a year and hate America and spit in your face. I'd rather talk about this. Let's try a couple of guys. Tony on W. No one from New York. You see, they don't read Playboy in New York. In New York, Playboy is too meek for New Yorkers. When you look at what went on in New York on the Forty Second Street, Playboy was considered like a grandmother's magazine, and yet it was it was sold in New York. Oh, here's someone from New York, Ron on WABC Line Nine. What do you think about you Hefner, Hefner's legacy? Uh, yeah, Savage. Uh, I. I kind of think he's a villain and a hero at the same time. He's a hero to the 1%, and you know who they are. And to the other 99%, he's a villain in the sense that he turned the daughters into whores. You know what I mean? Well, keep going. No, no, this is what I want to hear as a man in the street. Go ahead, keep going. Taking your clothes off is a no-brainer. You don't need any talent for that. That was usually used as a, a last resort for a woman to make a few bucks. But he glamorized it. And, you know, with no remorse, he did a lot of uh, nasty things. I saw today that he had underground tunnels to the old Playboy Mansion. 
Yeah, and what were in the tunnel? The other under there. You know, they didn't elaborate on it, but they found blueprints. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah. So, in other words, in the tunnels, they did stuff that no one knew about? Yeah, I mean, why not? What the, what the heck are they there for? If there is some kind of trafficking going on down there, some kind of secret. But like, maybe, he, maybe, maybe it was his wine cell. <laughs> maybe he kept his diet soda down there to keep it cool. Yeah, exactly. Right. Play golf down there. But they, <laughs> the whole no, Tony, Tony was I'm sorry, your name, your, your name is Ron. Ron, you sound like a guy who knows what you're talking about. You said Hefner's responsible for the rise in hardcore porn. Isn't that your main point? Absolutely is, without a doubt. He, that was a gateway to get to the good stuff, you know, that we saw in the subways down in the... <laughs> in the remember, I remember I talked about that when I was a kid. I'd go down to 42nd Street. No, remember those subway uh, uh, magazine stands? Couldn't believe it. Yep, they were all over the place, one after the other. I couldn't even tell you the name. Each one was nastier than the next. And why were the guys behind the counters in those subway newsstands in those days, They all, all, every one of them was a deviant and a perv? They didn't care. We used to buy them. We were 10, 11, 12 years old. Nobody <laughs> would right. you were the, so you were the other kids from Brooklyn buying across the stand from me. Oh, forget about it, yeah. I can remember seeing one. My, my stupid brother had them laying around the house under his bed, and you find them. I didn't know this even thing was there. And it's like an immediate erection, so that's why it's a villain. It teaches you the wrong... <laughs> Ron, Ron, I want to ask you something. Did your father give you a beating when he caught you with those magazines? No, he didn't know. He used to have the big box of the nasty tapes hidden under the bed. We used to <laughs> see them out. But psychologically, what it did to me yeah. it was terrible. I look back on it now. I'm still a deviant in that field, in a sense. That I got to. <laughs> you still can't find. In other words, you can't find a real woman who can live up to the fantasy that they created. Absolutely. You know, it does. It does that. But one thing I could say, it prevents me from cheating, going out and spending a lot of money and cheating on my wife. You know, you well, that's a po that's a positive. All right. You go to bed. All right, Ron. That's a beautiful call. This is amazing. I knew this show would be good. I knew it. I, this is what I tell you, you know, why do we have to stick to the normal topics and say NFL now for the rest of our lives? I say let the goons go to, you know, where they belong, fire them all, don't go to the games, turn the game off and leave me alone already with the goons, okay? They're oppressed minorities, right? A real, minor, a real oppressed minority for 16 million a year, right? Okay. That's what Martin Luther King Jr. fought for, so the $16 million a year goon can spit on the flag. Go ahead. Make my day. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Shocking from an FBI report recently. Do you know what the average property loss from just one home break-in is? $2,316. Okay, it doesn't sound like a lot. One burglary, over $2,000. But if you tally up all the burglaries in this nation, it's worse. The total loss is in the billions. And with so much to lose, I'm telling you it's as important as ever to protect your home. And the best way is with Simply Safe Home Security. Simply Safe protects every door, every window in your home. The beauty is the system is completely wireless. You set it up yourself, no drilling holes in your wall, and then you have professional alarm monitoring around the clock ready to send police. And if you move, hold on, if you move, you take it with you. I didn't know that till I talked to the owners. And that's just only $15 a month with Simply Safe. You can be sure that your home and your things are protected. So go to simplysafesavage.com and get a special 10% discount when you order today. Or if you want this security system right now, visit your local Best Buy. You'll have your home protected by tonight. It's that simple. That's simplysafesavage.com, S-I-M-P-L-I safesavage.com. For 10% off, simplysafesavage.com. Lynn on WTMA in South Carolina. Was you Hefner, the purveyor of Playboy who just died, a hero or a villain? I think I'm going to be the odd man out. I am going to say he was a hero. Um... A woman's body is very beautiful, all through history, all through the arts. It has always been admired by men. I, I think what he did was in good taste. It wasn't as it wasn't as horrible as what a lot of the abuse you're seeing today with women. 
just just look at our listen to the music, listen to the rappers. I I would. No, I'm I'm listening to you. I'm not I'm not saying one thing or another. I'm listening to a woman who says that you have to was an artist, not a pornographer. I think this was a form of art. I, I really do. And I don't think the women who uh, went there or were in the mansion, they knew exactly what was going on. They weren't victims at all. All right. Well, you make a good point, and I'm sure that's why America is divided on the legacy of you, Hefner. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Liberals in New York. They think it's like Nazis when they hear German. You say Frankfurt to the average New York liberal, they call the police. You say, yeah. Are this group still in business? Are they allowed to do this in Germany anymore under the uh, communist who runs it? Who knows? Who cares? Nine. Play it again. I loud around. Nine. Nine. You scream nine in the streets of Manhattan right now. They call nine one one. Nine. 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 Cops tell me say what nine? Just said nine. I need. I need a number nine on the lottery. I need nine. It is the Savage Nation. What a beautiful day it is out there. And the the world goes on. You got the morons with the kneeling. That's an issue. Fatso seems to be uh, backed into a corner. The maniac with the crazy haircut. I still don't understand it. That's not a Korean haircut. I'm sorry. If a Korean guy works for me, I I know him for 20 years. No one cuts the hair like that. In fact, I don't know if I should mention his name. My guy works for me. Uh, His mother walked out of North Korea with nothing on her back through ice and snow. And worked her whole life to get away from that, that, that oppressive system that the Nation magazine loves and Hillary Clinton loves. All the leftists love Kim Jong-un. They hate tr- Trump to show you how crazy they are. So yesterday I took the day off, as I said. I took a ferry into San Francisco. Oh, wait, something happened on the way back, too, to top it off. Wait, I didn't even tell you this one. Lawyer, the argument with the lawyer going in, that was number one. I had to call him a shyster. Then on the way back, again, minding my business, I saw a sunset, put it on Twitter. I said, God. All I said was God with the picture of the sunset going behind the Golden Gate Bridge. It was awesome. I forgot what, you know, you sit behind a microphone every day. You start to forget there's a world out there. I was a guy who used to like to hike mountains and go on boats. This is like all I do now. This is like a a nightmare sitting in front of a microphone. It's like I'm back to where my grandfather was. God bless his soul. He sat in front of a sewing machine till he died. Came here as an immigrant, worked his heart out, died at 49, right, from sitting in a tailor store in Manhattan. I'm sitting in front of a microphone. I was really back in front of a, a treadle working a sewing machine. But I'm not complaining. I could do other things. So I'm on the ferry. I come back. As the boat's docking in Sausalito, I don't know why, another ferry hand. Maybe he knew me. Maybe he didn't. I didn't have Teddy with me. He starts talking to me, and he says, do you know Robert De Niro? You look just like him. I didn't say anything. I said, well, I had a fedora on. So he says, he says, De Niro was on this ferry, da, 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 gave me his address on this street and told me to call who. When he got there, I said, how did he come to tell you his whole life story? I didn't know if he was telling me the truth. He said he was all alone. He just came out here to get it. He comes from San Francisco to Sausalito and goes back. A lot of people do that. They visit San Francisco, then they take the ferry to Sausalito and go back because the ride is amazing, right, for 30 minutes. I said, well, how do you come to talk to you? He says, well, I'm a jazz musician and this and that. All right, so 
Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Big deal. All I know is he got to talk to Michael Savage, which is more important, because uh, I'm a local guy here, and probably I have had more of an influence over this city than anyone will admit, and yet it's gotten worse. I was in the city yesterday, and i got to tell you, no one loves San Francisco more than I do. No one. But when I see what it has become, I was going to take pictures, which I did, of the bums, and I'm talking everywhere you turn, the filth, the dirt, the pants off, the body parts exposed, the, the feces, the urine, the needles, the smell of marijuana everywhere. I said, the country has to know what liberalism does to a city. And I said, what's the point? They know what it did. Take a look at New York. What, it's any different to New York with the bums? Were they treated like sacred cows? So I didn't take that picture. Instead, I took a picture. I went the other way. I took a picture of the sun setting behind the Golden Gate Bridge and put it up and said, God. Got a lot of good responses. There were a lot of people like that. It was a reaction to the National Felons League, the lovely uh, the dolls in the National Felons League, you know, the, the American lovers. You know how much they love America, the felons. So I don't want to do the felons. Instead, I'm doing Hugh Hefner's legacy today. But I haven't gotten to the tax plan boring. I haven't gotten to Steven Seagal saying Russia and USA should be allies, which he's right, by the way. I always liked Steven Seagal's movies, even after he became, uh, let us say, less than handsome and less than a an attractive human being. I mean, I don't know what happened to that guy. In his early movies, like, wow, was he great. Remember when he did those quick moves? Taekwondo. Was it Taekwondo that he did? Like, this guy's tall, and he knew Taekwondo, but the best part of the Steven Seagal movies was he once did, in one of his movies, an opening scene of a Taekwondo old Chinese guy master, like a little guy who was bald. That guy moved like the wind. I never saw anything like it. And I think it was him as a young guy. But Steven Seagal, as you well know, is a big friend of Vladimir Putin. And he went on Good Morning Britain. And here's what Steven Seagal had to say in clip one. This kind of propaganda uh, is really a diversion, you know, uh, f from creating a diversion so that the people in the United States of America won't really see what's happening. And I think most of the people in the United States of America and most of the people in Russia want to like each other, you know. And we need each other. Russia and America should be right. great allies. And that's right. the way it should be. There you go. He's 100% right. So Hillary Clinton started the bad lie, created Hitler in her own mind, in order to get our mind off the uranium deal that her and her husband did with the Russians. By the way, how that's not come up over and over again is beyond me. You want to talk about a Russia investigation? Investigate the uranium deal that the Clintons did. Now, wait, Steven Seagal goes on in 02, listen to this. For anyone to think that Vladimir Putin had uh, uh, Vladimir Putin. anything to do with fixing the elections or Vladimir even that the Putin. Russians have that kind of technology is, is stupid. Good. And, uh, y y you know, we have a situation here where really all of this is happening, in my opinion, from uh, astronomical propaganda... Good for you, Stephen. Good for you, Stephen Seagal. Yes, Russia and the USA should be allies. It's all propaganda of the Democrat Party. And I want to meet Vladimir Putin. How did he say it? Vladimir Putin. He said it that way. He didn't say Vladimir Putin. He's not from Brooklyn. Vladimir Putin. No, it's Vladimir Putin. Didn't he say Pew? He said Pew. That's very Russian. Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin. I want to meet Vladimir Putin. I met Donald Trump. I had ice cream with, with Trump. I'll have uh, uh, polonium sushi with Putin. Why not? Give me a nice piece of sushi. My hair will fall out, and uh, that'll be it. This is, <laughs> I don't know. You know, you ask yourself, do you really want to meet certain people? You get, like, afraid to meet people. Like, you know, you're gonna go to the Armitage. What I really want to do in Moscow is go to the Ar Armitage Art Museum. That's one thing I want to do. Do you know how many Russians died in World War II? Do you know how many Russians died liberating concentration camps. Do you know how many Russians died liberating Berlin? 200,000. Actually, it was 400,000 Russians died in the last few months of the war in liberating Berlin. You don't know any of that. And to see this witch going on these shows and, and defaming the Russian people like this gets me sick. Anything to get our mind off the crimes of the Clinton Foundation. But this all propaganda around the clock. So you, Hefner, do we have the Playboy interview anywhere? Did you find it yet? I asked for the link. 
Okay, now, a fellow who uh, is a friend of mine, Stephen Travers, a good writer. I hope it's not bad. Uh, but, uh, okay, here. He says, Dr. Savage, here is what you said about you, Hefner, in the 2012 Gentry Magazine interview I did with you. I'm going to read it cold. I hope, it's, I hope it confirms my views today. Okay, I'll read it cold. I, it's not a rehearsed show. Stephen Travers. He calls man-made global warming a hoax orchestrated by a fraud. Is that me or Hefner? Former Vice President Al Gore also enriched himself. He compares the Nobel Prizes, Oscars, and Pulitzers that liberals honor each other with to the golden calf of the Old Testament. He agrees with some hesitation that you have to as a pornographer who ruined men by airbrushing the Shiksa in the Vermont cabin who was perfect and had perfect breath, right? Who smiled all the time and, <laughs> and never had a bad moment in her existence. Who could lift you out of your despair with one wink? Unquote. Oh, so I said that. But Playboy centerfolds were angels compared to the craven sluts Larry Flint created. Silicone breasted chicks whose only need... Uh, Okay, this is family oriented. I'll stop right there. So, okay, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't contradict myself. That's pretty good. I, I still agree with that. I, oh, so it's me saying that. He was interviewing me where I said he calls man-made global warming a hoax orchestrated by a fraud. Former Vice President Gore, all to enrich himself, he compares the Nobel prizes, Oscars, and Pulitzers that liberals honor each other with to the golden calf of the Old Testament. He agrees with some hesitation that you after is a pornographer who ruined men by quote airbrushing the shiksa in the Vermont cabin who was perfect and had perfect breath, right? Who smiled all the time <laughs> and, <laughs> and never had a bad moment in her existence, who could lift you out of your despair with one wink, unquote. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, I did, uh, the Playboy interviewed me a while ago and they smeared me. It was awful. I never, I was interviewed at the time by the New Yorker magazine who did a pretty good interview. But then there's this creep they sent out from Playboy who wrote an 8,000-word article about Michael Savage in the June 2010 issue. And he put me down while he sat with me. He was the night, you know, Mr. Nice Guy. So Drew Zahn of WND said, see Sparks fly Michael Savage in Playboy. Let me read it to you before I take your calls on this issue of Hugh Hefner's uh, legacy. So I'll just read it and see what it is. Playboy contributing editor David Hochman fired the first shot in an 8,000-word article for the June 2010 issue that leaves no holds barred. He said, and this is what the Playboy editor said. Now, remember, he sat in my house with me, and he was like a nice guy. Then he writes this, quote, I can't remember a more difficult interview, Hockman writes. Savage was a fine host, but his opinions are extreme to the point of being poisoned. Much of the time, I hated him. That's what he's writing about me. He's maddeningly bullheaded and closed-minded, and after enduring a string of questions picking apart Savage's on-air comments and accusing the host of being angry, rabid, xenophobic, and irresponsible, the nation's number three rated talker finally fired back. Quote, that's the sort of bull s question I would expect from liberal vermin media, Savage said, when accused of condoning the murder of Muslims. Quote, people love to twist what I say, take it out of context, make me a monster. Savage consented to the Playboy interview despite the latent hostility in the questions in an effort to take his message to a wider audience. Playboy granted his goal, allowing Savage to go off uncensored by radio broadcast guidelines. On the topic of homosexuality, for example, Savage described himself as a, quote, sexual libertarian, but still presented a case for prohibiting gay marriage. Quote, do whatever the F you want if it feels good, Savage said. Like a psychiatrist wrote, I don't care what people do with what orifices nor with whom to get pleasure. Just leave the children alone. That's been my view on gay sex and marriage. Why should I care what people do to stimulate themselves as long as children are not affected, he continued. Gay marriage confuses children. It all comes back to the survival of a society. To me, marriage has always been the brick foundation of every society. You start tampering with the definition of marriage and you, sp you spread that idea to children. You're tampering with the whole structure. Uh, da, 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 da. He went on, savage. I'm not a Republican because I don't like their politics. And I know they're a bunch of crooks, Savage said. Look at what Bush did. He was an embarrassment. The man couldn't complete a sentence without mangling words. Not that being articulate is the end all. Look at Obama. My listeners appreciate that I'm not a mouthpiece for either party. And then he goes on. So we went on to the Tea Party. They're not bad, but I wanted to see the Playboy interview itself. All right, I didn't forget about it. It doesn't really matter. See Sparks fly. 
Okay, so we'll go back to the, oh my God, I ran through a stop set already. Today is one of those days where the time is like flying and I'm waiting for my lunch. So I got a half a migraine from, because the lunch is late, number one. I have a very set schedule. I burn like an opera singer on this show, right? You can hear it in the voice. Think of Pavarotti performing without a, a, de- a decent breakfast. That's me today. So I had no fuel. So the engine's burning hot. One of the cylinders is already overheating. I can feel the carbon building up in the right cylinder on the right top of the brain. I need lunch. But the food out here where I live is so bad you could die from it. You cannot get a decent lunch. You have to fight for the food. People don't know food. They don't know from Gornished out here, nothing. They're afraid to say a word. They take the smallest portions of the worst food and they say thank you over and over again. They actually thank the owner for screwing them. But I'm waiting for it because I'm hungry and I'm a captive audience. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. King Cole's version. No, I don't like it. Killer. I, I like Nat King Cole with the chestnuts. That's the only song he ever did that I like. He's a little too soft for me. I like the Tony Martin version of uh, There Goes My Heart. I used to sit in the, my father's car going over the bridge into Manhattan. And he, I don't know why I like that song. Who knows what it meant? You never know. Why would he sing it all the time? Oh, whatever. He's dead and buried. God rest him. There goes my heart. Where is this guy today? And where are the men that can sing? The where, where are the great like tenors of those days? Man, like Mel Song. I was Jerry Vale, okay. Jerry Vail. Same same genre. Genius, same genius. My Today it's you go everywhere you go, it's the same chicks crying about they lost their iPhone along with their boyfriend or girlfriend. You don't know what you live. Wherever you go, Macy's, a supermarket, it's the same chick music, crying and complaining. Everyone's in trouble. They lost an iPhone. They can't find a hair clip. Their makeup is bad. There's white privilege. The same whiny music. There's no men singing except rap stars rubbing their crotch, saying they hate America and hate women. That's the world I live in. Pardon me. But we're talking about Hugh Hefner's legacy. Um, we could do the NFL's tax scam. It's a $14 billion business. Do you don't pay no taxes? Did you know that? <laughs> it shows you the scam artists. The owners are the real scam artists. How do you think they can afford to pay these uneducated goons so much money? Because they don't pay any taxes. If the NFL had to pay the, go- had pay the fair taxes, the average goon would make about 70 grand a year instead of $16 million. I mean, Think about it. Divide it up by the number of players, and they pay their fair share of taxes. The goons get 70 grand a year, not $70 million. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. It is. Savage Nation. Before we go back to the legacy of Hugh Hefner and ask again, uh, was he a hero or a villain? Did he help or destroy the, the image of women? Did he help or destroy marriages with his playboy? He died, so we're talking about him. You have to listen to Michelle Obama in this double talk in clip 16. It's worth listening to. Listen. We have been socialized to sort of sit there and be quiet and to sort of, we think. Like you? 12 times before we open our mouths. Well, maybe I'm wrong. We argue with ourselves in our head, and we think that before I can speak up, it has to be perfect. While the guy is like, blah, 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 blah. He's not thinking about perfect, right, or anything. He's just like, I'm used to hearing my voice. Um, I, I, that's what happens to a lot of people. So here's an oppressed woman now, Michelle Obama, getting in on the oppressed racket. Grew up in a, uh, I understand, a middle-class home in Chicago. Always made believe she was poor. It worked for her. She became first lady, sort of. 
And now she's complaining that women were sort of socialized to sit there and be quiet. I, I guess that message didn't take effect on her somehow. I guess she's speaking for the other women. I guess that's the only way to look at it. All right, Jan on WABC, line nine. You're in New York City. What do you think about Hugh Hefner's legacy? I think he was a promoter. He made millions. And? He was not good and he was not bad. He, he made millions of dollars. He loved doing it. And if you ever watched his show on television, you would see him. He always had this little laugh on his face. Like, he's, you know, I'm making all no, but the what, But as an American icon, people are talking about his actual legacy. What do you think it is? His legacy? It was certainly not pornographic. Well, it, what would you call a depiction of women, then? I think he... Uh, I, I don't think he showed them in a bad way. Uh, there was, they built a Playboy Club up near where I live in northern New Jersey. And I know quite a few women who worked the well way, way through college working as bunnies at the Playboy Club. They were very happy it was there. And were they prostitutes on the side or not? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Some of I'm them just had asking. I, I don't know. I never different. went to a play. Look, I never went to a Playboy Club. The guys I know who did go were like goofy guys. They never could attract women. They were usually the, the schmendricks in the crowd. We went there a few times. They were just waitresses, and they were in there. No, but I mean, the guys that went were basically Schmendricks. I mean, the guys I knew would never go. They wouldn't be caught dead in the Playboy Club. It was for like a Schmendrick who came from out of town. All right, whatever. That's neither here nor there. All right, we're moving on here. Uh, must listen. The National Felons League is spitting on America, not the fans. That's on my, michaelsavage.com. The judge said that Black Lives Matter is a movement that can't be sued. Okay, what judge is that? These are t uh, articles I have on my website. Mistrial and art curator's death after a juror refused to, quote, send a black man to jail. How's that for jury tampering? That's amazing. Woman, ma oh, this is a great one out of Italy. Listen to this. You got to see this link. Woman marries herself, says her happiness does not depend on a man. There's apparently an entire cult of people who marry themselves now. New York Daily News, Ariel Scott Scotty. An Italian woman was the bride in the wedding ceremony without a partner that included bridesmaids, a beaded wedding dress, 70 guests, and a reception complete with three-tiered cake. Laura Messi, a 40-year-old fitness model in Lissoni, Italy, recently married herself in a solo ceremony, a rising trend called sologamy. <laughs> that holds no legal weight but meant a great deal to her. Uh, I told friends and family that I had not found my soulmate, that if I had not found my soulmate by my fourth birthday, I would marry myself. Messi believes she is the first Italian woman to marry herself, but in May, a man in Naples, Italy, recited vows to himself, according to the BBC. <laughs> it's a crazy world. I, you know, I look at this like a, from another planet. I got to tell you the truth. I look at the social evolution or devolution, whichever way you look at it. I feel as like I'm from another planet looking in. Woman marries herself, says her happiness does not depend on a man. So what is her point? If it doesn't depend on a man, why is she marrying herself? What is she saying? She's showing off something. She doesn't depend on a man. Okay, I get that. So why marry yourself? You're trying to say something. I don't, I don't quite follow it. I guess she's got a good publicity thing out of this. Didn't find her soulmate. Take a look at her teeth on her. You can see why she never met a man. Looks like a shark with her hairdo. Who would go near a woman like this? A fitness guru. She's tougher than any five men put together, number one. Number two, a pair of teeth, and it looks like, hey, the shark bites with his teeth there, number two. She makes the, the Real Housewives of New York City look like uh, choir girls. I hate those shows, but you know, but you scan through it. You got, in this country we live in, if you're a TV watcher and who isn't, you, you see everything anyway just scanning through the channels. A Real Housewife of this, a Real Housewife of that. I never saw anything like these women. Everyone's a movie star. All of a sudden, the camera's in the living room, and they're putting on an act. They're supposed to make believe they're fighting with each other. Everyone's a star behind their car. Everyone's a star behind their bars. Well, if one day I find the man with whom I can plan a future, I'll be happy, she said. But my happiness does not depend on him. What a pair of choppers on this one. My God. Marilyn, KSFO on the You Have to Legacy. What do you think? Uh, yes, uh, it ruined my marriage for about 10 years because my husband wouldn't have anything to do with me unless he was watching or looking at the centerfold of Playboy. Now, that's a hell of an insult. Yes, yes, it was. It was. What do you mean? While he was engaged with you physically, he was looking at a Playboy? Yes. 
Oh, because he had been conditioned to the softcore porno of Playboy, and he could then not transit to a real woman. That's right. Did you, did, did, ten years you were married to this guy? No, I was married a long time because he straightened up after a while. You know, he became a Christian, and he straightened up, and he didn't do those things anymore. But was he, okay, now I'm not being facetious. Was he able to engage with you in, in a physical way after he became a Christian? Yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. And where is he today, under the underground? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. there's no jokes to be said. May rest in peace. So, so at the end of the day, he, uh, you and him had a, had a good life together. Yes, we did. We were married over 50 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a beautiful story in its own way. You know, it's called repentance, isn't it? Redemption. Yes. Words that have been forgotten in our society since it's so cynical. When have you last heard the word repent or redemption? Never. You think you think Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg ever heard the word repent? Or they know what the no. word redemption means? When you throw billions of dollars at perverts like uh, those who run Hollywood, you think they know what the word repent or redemption means? They laugh at everybody. Oh, sure they do. Yeah. They laugh at everybody. Marilyn, I'm going to send you a gratis copy of God, Faith, and Reason the day it is out. Will you stay in the line, please? Yes. Oh, and uh, I just what? wanted to tell you sometime, maybe... Um, this is like a stalker already. Now it's switched. They just cut her off. Jim, I see Jim smiling. There was like a stalker job coming, right? Jim, what'd she actually say, Jim? Something on the stalk level? No? Now that her husband's gone, isn't that she's looking for... No, I don't want to... Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, eight for, <laughs> I love talk radio. It's crazy, crazy medium. When when you get into topics that are socially, like in social topics like that, my food has arrived, so I'm already distracted because uh, you got to understand some. The olfactory already kicked in. My brain is not functioning properly. I smell the uh, the uh, Mongolian grief that just arrived. I know it's going to be horrendous. I'll eat it. I'll devour it. I am so hungry, but. I know it's going to cause every upset known to, known to mankind tonight. But I'm going to the dentist uh, right after the show, so let him put up with the foul, <laughs> the foul breath. I don't care what. No, I goggle. I, that's a horrible job being a dentist. I remember when I was a kid, I didn't know what I wanted to be like most kids. See, you, you, you look on role models. I wished my father had been rich. That's the one thing I wanted because then I wouldn't have to think about it. If my father was rich. I wouldn't have to even think about anything. I'd go in his business and do nothing like most rich kids, and just live well. But no, he wasn't. So, like I had one friend whose father owned a factory. I envied him because he didn't have to work very hard. But I had to work hard. So you, you'd ask the adults around, you know, like what? To, you know. So a doctor would come in the house. In those days, they did house calls. So naturally, he was a role model. So he's a nice, good-looking young guy, tall. And I asked him once, I was a kid. I think my father had a heart attack. He was in it. So I said to him, what's it like to be a doctor? He said, this and that. So I said, well, what? He said, why are you thinking about it? I said, I think I want to become a psychiatrist. He said, why do you want to do that? He said, why do you want to listen to everyone's problems all the time? That was the end of my psychiatric career. Then I asked a dentist once, should I become a dentist? He said, why do you, why do you want to smell people's bad breath for the rest of your life? That was the end of my dental career. So you see, things do work out at the end of the day. Yeah, they, they work out in their own way. Marilyn on WABC in New York, what do you think of you, Hefner? Yeah, hi. I think uh, not only is he uh, a villain, I think he's a devil. Every time I looked at that man's face, I saw evil. He capitalized on women, young women, many of them very innocent, who wanted to become stars. That Playboy Mansion was a, just a place of orgies, all right? And you, all the Hollywood people went there and participated in it. And... When he had his show on TV with his smoke jacket on and he had that smug look on his face, sure, he was happy. And I think he, I think he hurt a lot of marriages, all right? Not mine. I, I'm not going to say he hurt mine. I'm not going to say my husband didn't look at the Playboy books, but that ended. But my children were in somebody's home, and they had Playboy books in the bottom of their vanity, and they went to get something from the vanity, and then they saw them. But I just feel sorry. What about the three young, he only I always had three young women, not one, three that he lived with, all right? Thank God for Viagra, because I don't understand what <laughs> this man, what they saw in him, or how he had the stamina to keep up with women. <laughs> That's very funny. Very good, Marilyn. That's a very good spiel. Thank very you for calling me. No, no, that's a good spritz. Thank you for that one.
Uh, that's good. Thank you. Now, there's a good spritz. Nice one. Uh, 855-407-282. Oh, my God. Bar owner gets slammed for making racist doormat with NFL jerseys of Marshawn Lynch and Colin Pimpleneck. Why? Isn't that his First Amendment right to make a doormat of their jerseys? Why should he get slammed? Why is it racist to make a doormat of their jerseys? If I had a bar, I'd make a doormat of their jerseys because they're a bunch of despicable anti-American liars. That's all. Nothing to do with race. They, by the way, you want to make it about race? They made it about race. They're basically saying because they're black, America's no good. Is that not what they're saying? I mean, let's clear the air. Who made it about race first? That's what the Neil is about. They don't like America. What, they're not making 32 million, only 16 million? If it wasn't a racist country, they make 32 million, not 16 million for kicking a ball. You hear this? Stupid. Let's see what's next on the air. Juror refuses to put a black man in jail forcing mistrial in Brooklyn manslaughter case. No comment. Okay. Why a school librarian turned down books donated by Melania Trump. The librarian's a moron. Melania is the greatest first lady America's ever had, including Martha Washington, by the way. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. So here's some very interesting news. Did you know that you can find out if your body is making enough nitric oxide simply by testing your own saliva? It's simple. And I've been raving about Super Beets, my circulation superfood drink, because it happens to work. You get more energy, more stamina in as little as 20 minutes. And the good people at Super Beets include their new saliva indicator strips with every purchase. You see, you use your own saliva to see changes in your nitric oxide level when you use Super Beets. I love that Super Beats puts their money where their mouth is for a limited time with your first order. Super Beats will send you an entire month's supply of saliva indicator strips, a $25 value for free. With this order, you'll get a free book plus your first can of Super Beats free. That's another $60 value, again for free. Try it for yourself. Call 1 800 481 0504. You're going to get a month's supply of indicator strips free to track those changes at a cellular level. More energy, more stamina while supporting healthy circulation. So call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. That's 1-800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. We go back to, since you have to died, what is his true legacy? Now, you're going to hear he was great. Every liberal publication is going to lionize him, extol him, call him every great thing under the sun. Uh, and you know how they twist everything, those in the media. And he was in the media, so that now he's going to be doubly held up on a, on a pedestal. But what do you really think? Was he a villain, or was he the hero they're going to make him out to be? KSFO, REZ, line six. Rez, go ahead, please. Father Savage, you're truly a man of God. I mean, only a person with your discernment and the Holy God is, is speaking right through you, sir. He was a villain. Bottom line, he was a villain. Uh, my marriage suffered from it um, because pornography, just like anything else, it's, it's like a drug. You start off small and then you want more and more and more, and it and it and it completely hijacks uh, the reward system, the dopamine centers. So you want you want a, a more more of a high every time. So you look at more uh, filthy things, and it just escalates. And um, after a while, being with the real woman just. Uh, doesn't work. It doesn't cut it. It's not exciting enough. And what does it do to women who have to cavort like prostitutes working with a trick to keep their man satisfied? What does it do to women? Well, I'm not I'm not really sure exactly what it does. I, well, are, I hear you, and I appreciate that call because people do have, they have some split feelings about pornography in general, by the way not just the fact that Playboy was clearly a pornographic magazine. 
uh, you could say it was a soft core porno magazine, but it was like saying marijuana is not a drug. It is a drug. And many people know it's a gateway drug. And in that sense, it's the most dangerous of all drugs. As benign as some people think it is, and I'm not one of those who think it's benign, uh, it's still a gateway drug. And people who want a bigger kick go on to harder drugs. The same with Playboy leads people to harder pornography as attested to by what is on the Internet today. The most vile things you can imagine are now considered, uh, if not wholesome, legal. And does it because it's legal, does it make it good? That's the real question. Now, it was a combination of Larry Flint and Hugh Hefner, who destroyed the whole sanctity of woman in this country in the minds of many people. And you could say, well, okay, but it's also helped people who were sexually dysfunctional to uh, achieve a certain level of sexuality. You could argue it both ways. It's a matter of what you think. All I can tell you is get ready for the hearts and flowers and the sanctity that's going to surround every news report beginning tonight on Hugh Hefner's legacy. I asked today, though, was he a hero or a villain? Did he help or destroy families and marriages? And I think we've done very well so far. We're going to continue this discussion for a few more minutes in the next hour. Be here if you want to join us on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Well, you love, you never seen woman taken by the wind. Would you stay and she promised you ever, will you ever win? All right, big deal. All right, play the next one. I can't listen to any of this garbage anymore. Since the knee thing started, a lot of things are changing in my head. I'm boycotting a lot. I'm, I'm just turning things off. I see a knee person, that's it. Uh, it's over. They they back the knees, I turn off this show. Hollywood got... You notice how quiet the Hollywood uh, people have been, the A-listers on this? Because they know that you have the power to not go to their movies. You have the power not to watch their TV dramas. So they're being very careful because one thing you got to say about their agents... And handlers is they're smart. And uh, there's an awful lot of you and a very few number of the knee job people. Not a lot of them. And an awful lot of you. And without you, there's no them. What would they be doing for a living if they weren't throwing a ball on the field? I'll let you figure it out. Let's see. They'd be nuclear physicists, Nobel Prize winning chemists. Yeah, okay. You get the picture, don't you? They ought to be, thank God they live in this country. A country foolish enough to reward people for throwing a ball around $16 million a year, and yet they get to, to do this to the flag and the country. This is not a protest. This is a nonsense thing, but I don't want to talk about it because I did it Monday and Tuesday. I want to talk about a Hugh Hefner who died, 91 years old. Just shows you bad, shows you that evil pays. I don't know how to live. Why the evil? If he's so evil, how did he live to 91? Probably had not a bad day in his life. Not a, with all the Viagra and he didn't die of a heart attack? I'm not thinking about that. I mean, if you think about it just from a medical point of view, you have to we're talking about his legacy was a, you know, a hero or a villain. But I'm thinking now on a different level, on a medical level. Given that he was obviously using male enhancement medications, because men at 90 are not able to, yeah. So given that he was using that, so it didn't cause uh, any problems medically. So that's a good thing to know. You think about that, that's a positive. I mean, I'm talking behind the scenes, not intellectually. I'm saying you could just take that home. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, therefore, you don't have to worry about that. That's one thing. But on a moral level, it's another story. It depends on which side of the uh, Mason-Dixon line you're on, <laughs> so, so to speak. You know, as to what you think about the guy. If you're from New York and you're one of these, you know, cynical, wise guys where, uh, you know, everything's a scam, 
and everyone's no good. Hefner was a great guy. If, on the other hand, you come from a decent Christian or Jewish family or a Muslim family that believes in, in God, he was a monster, a villain. So I, I think the answer is depending upon who you are, not really what. What's the true legacy in this society? What is, what is considered a role model? It makes us ask ourselves what our legacy will be. Like, I, I like to believe I gave good things to the world. I'm thinking about my legacy. No, it makes me think about what's my legacy. So, okay, I think about that because I'm having my archives put together, all my writings going back to the 60s, all my tapes going back to the beginning of radio, which predated 1994, thousands of tapes in a library. Okay, that's one thing. Then number three, it's like all the manuscripts that have not been published, another group of things. Then there's the whole photo collection. It's awesome. Then all the memorabilia. So I have someone who's going to be doing all this. So what is my legacy? What is my legacy going to be? If you like my politics and you like my art form and you think I'm talented, it'll be a great legacy. If you wanted the drug-addicted left, you're going to say I'm a Nazi, a fascist, a no-goodnik. So, you know, it's all political today. There is no legacy other than your politics. In other words, your politics creates your legacy. It depends who writes the history books. Now, that's another problem. Uh, because all the people who write the history books are all commie leftists. So I don't think you're going to get any, any clear history on this. On Hefner, you know already, the media is on his side. That's all. They are him. Are you telling me they're not him? They're all, they're all trade in pornography. You look at any website in this country, any big news website, with very rare exception, you're reading a serious story. You get distracted on the right side with like, a brazier fell off. They're in can. They're in, there. She is frolicking in the water. Like who cares? Another one. Oh, I never saw a body before. Every minute you can't read a story. You know. Look, I come from a scholarly background where I spent years in museums and libraries, reading with concentration. This is a nightmare to be in the media. The distraction is very hard. I mean, you have to have ADD to survive in this business, or you have to have overcome ADD to be more specific. Well, you have to live with ADD and function with it. I don't know how to, ex how to explain it to you. Anyway, here we are. What's his legacy? Do you really care? Greta, on WABC, you care enough to call the show. What do you think Hefner's legacy is? Hi, Dr. Savage. I think he's a big pig, and I, I can't appreciate someone like that. When I found out he died last night, I told my husband, well, good riddance, finally. But, I mean, maybe that's nasty and callous. Um, and, and I'm a nurse, and I, I don't like to see people die, honestly. But honestly, I just think he's a big pig. He didn't do any favors. For well, me. he lived to 91. He didn't exactly die impoverished and broken, you know. He lived. To, he had a good life. Woman the, that man lived like, the man lived like a king, so he had a very good life. But the question is, what did he leave behind? What was his legacy? Well, he's, he's just part of, like you say, the media. I mean, what led to that, the woman that called in earlier and said, well, these women are not victims. They went there knowing what, what they were getting into. Ab absolutely. There, there's idiots everywhere you turn, if you, want, if you want to be honest. So these women that got involved, yeah, they can be idiots, too. And unfortunately, a lot of them... Well, I wasn't talking about the women who went to the Playboy orgies. I'm not talking about the women who we hung around with. I am talking about women in our society and the world. How did he affect them by objectifying women and airbrushing them did he do them a favor no he absolutely did not he made women try to live up to the mannequin that they're supposed to be in this magazine and and some men still hold women to that you know it's funny you should say the mannequin when you consider where this society and the west is going today with their insanity the insanity of sex dolls replacing women have you seen that what's going on I've seen too many things that I'm... I'm no, I, I wonder what I would feel if I were a woman, and I hear that men are buying sex dolls instead of going out with women. I would wonder... I really wonder what my, where my mind would be going. Uh, where would it leave me? The crazy society we live... You talk about sexism. Is it any more sexist than to hear that a man is buying a sex doll over a woman? No, it's not. It's just, it, it's, it makes that mentality of you have to live up to this... All right, now here's an interesting question. We keep reading about artificial intelligence and some of the brightest minds of our generation, some of the brightest people in the history of the world who are in the tech business are warning us that uh, the artificially intelligent robots are going to cause a revolution and start killing people. Well, you know, I really start to wonder what they mean by that and why they're saying that, you know. Uh, what do they mean by that? What do you mean that the robots are going to start killing us? What, are they going to join together? I don't know. In artificial intelligence, I guess it can it can 
have an intelligence of its own and start to take But what about sex dolls? What if the sex dolls get together and start killing men? <laughs> what if there's like all of a sudden the sex dolls communicate? In, let's say a couple of years, their, their computers are so advanced they can communicate with each other. Like every sex doll gets their own iPhone to keep them happy as you put them in a closet at night. You have to buy them like an iPhone or else they'd like, they don't even, you know, what if a sex doll becomes like a person and they don't like even want to be with you anymore? Unless you buy them an iPhone and all sorts of gadgets. So let's say they start communicating with each other and they all go on strike the same day. What would happen then? Or if they start to kill people. I'm not just thinking. I'm just thinking out loud. I'm a free thinker. This is the Savage Nation. 855-4872-82 phone number. MichaelSavage.com website. And uh, I had the uh, Mongolian grief just now already. My mind slowed down. This is the problem with radio. Is I have to eat during the show or I can't function. Then when I eat, it, it affects my thinking. I become more mellow by the third hour. If I eat in the second hour, you notice my voice is already calmer? It's necessary. I, I die otherwise. I can't do a show without food. I'm just a human being. I'm not a, I'm not a puppet. I'm not a doll. I'm not like a talk show host uh, computer. I'm not AI. I'm a human being sitting behind a microphone. Maybe I'd rather be on a ferry right now looking at the San Francisco skyline. It's all nice till you get off the boat and look at the bums waiting for you. That's real nice. How does a city survive like this? It can't go on like this. It can't go on with the bums. And you know, I, I walked around the streets and I see encampments of these filthy bums everywhere I turn. And I say to myself, this is growing like the cancer it is. And the liberals who run the city turn a blind eye to it because they don't even see it. They never go out of their little bolt bubbles. Feinstein, and, and you think Feinstein and the other one come off the hill and actually see the bums? What they've created in this city of tolerance? You know they never see them. They only read about it, and they write about it, and then they read the speeches that are given to them to sound like they're, you know, real kind. I look at the average person yesterday walking in the streets of San Francisco. Let's say the worker, the office worker, young, mainly younger people eating a sandwich, let's say sitting in the sun. Or, and I ask myself, who are they waiting for to come along to save them from the, de 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 the city that is degenerating right in front of their eyes? The bums are proliferating like rats in the streets. And a lot of them are violent. The smell coming out of the sewers is overwhelming in downtown San Francisco. And the, 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 the creeps who run the city, the supervisors, the mayor, they could care less. So the people are waiting for somebody to come along to save them. And they figure out oh, it's going to get better one day. And, and they walk. I look at their faces yesterday. Like they figure oh, it can't get any worse, but it's going to get worse. When will it get better? This city is becoming like Calcutta by the Bay. As Calcutta cleans up, San Francisco goes the other way. We're becoming India. As India is becoming more like America, we're becoming more like India was 20 years ago. I'm not kidding you. You've got to look here and see, the, see the, the, the horror of people living in the gutters here. So what's the answer? I have the answer to that question, too, but I'm not ready for it right now. I'd rather talk about Hefner. That's all. 855-400-7282, phone number, michaelsavage.com. Stephanie on KSFO, line nine, what's on your mind? What do you think of Hefner? Well, good afternoon, Michael. Um, I think you, Hefner, put a pretty face on perversion. Go ahead, keep going. And uh, as you said before, it was a, a, a gateway, Playboy was a gateway to pornography. And mm -hmm. by the way, the male enhancer that he was taking affected his hearing, according to his wife. What? Yeah. If you read the article, and I think it was daily, it says she said something that uh, he had to take it, and, uh, and it started to work, I guess, the second time around she married, decided to marry him. But she said it affected his hearing. I thought only Oxy destroyed hearing. No. She said, the, the, uh, she, I don't know if she said Viagra necessarily. I think she said the male enhancement drug that he was taking, it affected his hearing. So I don't I know only, how bad. I thought, uh, I thought it only affected talk show hosts who took it. <laughs> I don't know. But, no, in all seriousness, I didn't know that was a side effect of the male-enhancing drug. I know that it causes, like, blue vision and a drop in blood pressure and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I, so don't I didn't know. Hearing, hearing loss was a side effect of it. I had no idea. So, can I, is, any, is there a doctor in the house? Do, do male enhancement drugs cause hearing loss? I, I got to find that out because it could explain. Um, well, I got to stop right there because the people will accuse me of a, attacking another talk show host, which I am not doing at all. I don't know which one of them take uh, this stuff. I have no, how would I know what anyone does? I'm not privy to their medical uh, records. Okay, so 
we have the he- the Hefner legacy, Hefner legacy, Hefner, Hefner, the Heffer legacy, the U Heffer legacy. I gave him a new name, U Heffer. That'll help a little bit. Okay, so he changed his name a little bit. U U Heffer. WJRW in Michigan, James, line one, fire away, 30 seconds or less. What's you Heifer's legacy? The legacy is that sex doll. Look at the, the progression from soft porn, hard porn, people objectizing women and just having superficial needs that can't be met, women being lonely, men being lonely, men with men, women with women, and now we've got dolls. And we have a society that's degraded completely, Yes. To this day. All right, right. So you could say Hefner was the actual devil who started this devolution. He started it, right. It was, it was his soft version of airbrushing that led to, of course, the progression to worse, 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 and worse. Well, what's interesting to me, how come the women's movement hasn't come out against sex dolls? They have big mouths about everything else. Well, no. where, are the big, where are the big mouths in the women's movement about sex dolls? Why don't they oppose them? They're not coming out for any of the women's uh, issues, period. Yeah, I know. They're all phonies. They use the women's issues as a weapon, that's all. Yeah. It's all a weapon to them. This is all right, good point. So we've gone from softcore pornography to sex dolls. What's next? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We have a caller from Florida who is an original Playboy bunny who wants to tell us a story. And I am opening up a couple of lines now to anyone listening to this show who was a either a an original Playboy bunny or uh, attended some parties at the Playboy Mansion who want to call the show anonymously, if you wish, if you wish to do so, and tell us what you think of Hugh Hefner's legacy. Notice I made it in a very neutral way. You, what you think, not what I think. Diana on WFTL in Florida, line one. Go ahead, please. Hello? Diane. Yeah, you're on the radio. Go ahead, please. Okay. It, I was Benny Desi at the Great Gorge Resort in McAfee, New Jersey. There were 72 bunnies that were hired for that club, and, and we trained specifically to open that club. And there were 72 pages of do's and don'ts. We had an image that we had maintained. Um, we have a, a YouTube video that they did that explains everything, shows pictures. But I think there's a misconception between the bunnies and the playmates, two totally different people, if you will. Well, wait, okay, so the Playboy bunnies worked in the nightclubs, correct? Correct. And, and did a lot of, um, like, events and fundraisers and... Uh, All right, so you you were not in the in the business of after business stuff, right? Absolutely not. Absolutely. All right. Not. So you're saying that's one thing. Then you're saying the Playboy playmates were another story. I can't talk to you about them because I was not a playmate. I can only talk to you about bunny. But there's just the word bunny. I mean, if I were a woman, I, isn't that an offensive term to call a woman a bunny? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. There was, there was an image that, that we had to maintain, and it was very, very strict. There were 72 pages of rules and regulations. And, and if, you, if you did anything that was out of line, you would get fired. Absolutely. So who was the, was there a pit boss woman who, like, kept you in line? Well, it wasn't. There was a bunny mother. A bunny mother? Yeah. See, I, I didn't know that there was a, a hutch mother in there. Yeah, we had we had a bunny mother, and before you went on the floor, she a she bunny mother. She looked at your nails, your hair. You got wow, wow, a bunny mother. Look at that. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage. beginning, the owner of an historic U.S. clothing company has pulled ads from NFL games. Let's have a round of applause for a patriotic American, 
That's right. Alan Jones, CEO of Hardware Clothing and Check Into Cash Payday Loan Company. See, he just got free time for that. Announced on Tuesday he's through with sponsoring the wardrobes and advertising on the National Felons League. Hardware Clothing is America's oldest suit maker. They should advertise in the Savage Nation. In his statement, Jones said, our, comp our companies will not condone unpatriotic behavior. Can you believe this? Isn't this great? And he owns a lending chain called Check Into Cash, an owner of Hardware Clothes. How can anyone believe they're oppressed minorities? Are you joking? Are you people stupid? They're oppressed minorities making $16 million a year? I have a long story from the Daily Signal on the NFL tax breaks. Here's how much money the NFL rakes in from taxpayers by Jarrett Stepman, a great piece of work. I linked it up on michaelsavage.com, and he writes this. The kneeling fiasco may open the eyes of the public to a serious and generally unchecked issue. Billionaire NFL owners sponging enormous amounts of money from taxpayers through crony capitalist schemes. Did you know that, that a business that raked in $14 billion in revenue in 2016 is heavily subsidized? by local, state, and federal money based on dubious claims about stimulating the economy? The problem is rampant. One report on Watchdog.org said that over the past two decades, the NFL has raked in about $7 billion of taxpayer money to spend on stadium renovation and building. Did you know any of that? Another study from the Brookings Institution showed that federal taxpayers have subsidized the construction of 36 stadiums at a cost of over $3.2 billion since 2000. There's a lot for you to learn about this, to realize that not only do communities gain almost no economic benefits from subsidized sports teams, but some findings indicate harmful effects of sports on per capita income, wage and salary disbursements, and wages per job. Let me play a montage of the Hollywood idiots of the day who have entered the fray. Here they are, all of the lightweights of our time, Mocking Trump's NFL comments, as usual, as predicted. But play the sound of Robert. This, the Hollywood idiots of the day on the Savage Nation. And now, the Savage Nation Hollywood idiot of the day. President Trump uh, is angry at NFL players for their silent protest during the national anthem. That's what he said. Yeah, Trump said silent protests have no place anywhere outside my marriage. That's what... <laughs> Trump was still tweeting. The issue of kneeling has nothing to do with race. Wrong. <laughs> kneeling during the national anthem has everything to do with race. Just like your presidency. This all started on, on Friday when Trump said that NFL team owners should fire any son of a bee who doesn't stand for the national anthem. Check out what uh, one sports icon had to say about Trump's statement. So, excuse me, Mr. President, but I literally am a son of a bee. And there's no rule against peaceful protests, just like there's no rule against dogs playing basketball. Dude, you're going after the NFL? That's the most conservative league in sports. The owners, their owners donated millions to your campaign. That'd be like trying to fire your attorney general, even though he's the most conservative guy in the world, who was your first supporter in the Senate. Oh, my God, you did that, too. Donald. Why? Those players are protesting racial injustice. They're not protesting the American flag. Saying that kneeling is a protest against the flag is like saying Gandhi's hunger strikes were a protest against snacking. <laughs> you do realize that the civil rights activists weren't sitting at the lunch counter for better grilled cheese. When black football players protest peacefully by taking a knee during the anthem, he calls them sons of bitches who should be fired. Now look, I don't know if Trump is racist, but I do know he definitely prefers white people to black people. I can say that with confidence. With confidence. Oh, I have other topics I want to get to. Oh, many other topics. A Harvard Law grad sued, you're not going to believe this, sued the New York bar exam causing about, you know, talking about lawyers. I told you they were the pox of the nation are lawyers. Shakespeare had it right. Everyone understands the lawyers have destroyed America. Everyone understands that without tort reform, the nation is crippled forever. A Harvard law grad is suing the New York bar exam, saying she wasn't accommodated properly. Now, hold on now. Tamara Witch, Witch, W-Y-C-H-E, not W-I-T-C-H. Tamara Witch claims the New York State Board of Law Examiners violated the Americans with Disabilities Act for failing to grant the accommodation she needed, are you ready for this, for her anxiety and cognitive deficits. In other words, she's stupid. 
She has cognitive deficits, so she's stupid, in other words. That's what cognitive deficits means. You're stupid. I mean, in my day and age, if you, if you had cognitive deficits, you were dumb, and you went in the dumb class. You didn't slow the whole class down. Do you know why we have very few kids who excel today? Because they're considered the outcasts. Every benefit in every school is given for the outcasts. No, they're given for the dummies and the miscreants. There's a great cartoonist named Ben Garrison. You may have seen him on InfoWars. He's terrific. So he did a whole new panel of NFL teams renamed. And here's the names he came up with. The Pittsburgh Kneelers. The Carolina Concussions. <laughs> the Cleveland Reds with a star and hammer and sickle on their, on their jerseys. The Seattle Snowflakes. The Denver, the Denver Virtue Signalers. The Indianapolis Ingrates. The Tennessee Tantrums and the San Francisco Pinky Niners. <laughs> so yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Do you want to hear about my day off? I'll give you my day off. Off the air, I take a ferry into San Francisco because it was a calm, quiet, really hot day. So I go on the ferry, you know, I figured one. I haven't done it in years. I didn't have Teddy with me, so I was unrecognized. Had I had Teddy with me, it would have been another story. Everyone recognizes Teddy. Me, they don't know. That's why I'm in radio. So I'm on the boat, minding my business. The boat's pulling into San Francisco. So this kind of pudgy guy with a wrinkled shirt hanging out of his pants, a real slob, and the deckhand start to talk about Trump. And the deckhand says to the, to the slob, boy, I hope that Trump backing the wrong guy in Alabama is an indicator of what's coming during the midterm elections. I said, all right, here we go again. So the pudgy guy starts in with one word or another, and I don't know why. I mean, I didn't like what I was hearing, but they were talking very loud about politics, assuming that they were in a safe space, meaning that everyone agrees with their left-wing fanaticism. I wanted to let these people know that there are people amongst them who don't agree with them. So I, you know, I, you know stuck my nose into the conversation without yelling, and one word led to the other, and the pudgy guy says that Judge Roy Moore is a fascist, the guy who won, the guy who Trump didn't back. So I said, what do you mean he's a fascist? The man is a constitutionalist. What do you mean a fascist? I said, you mean if you back the Constitution, you're a fascist? And he says with a superior attitude, you know he was a New York type. No, he said, he puts his Christian beliefs above everything. So I said, you must be a communist then, because you hate Christians, right? You hate all religion? What do you mean I'm a communist? I'm not a communist. I don't want to talk to you, he said. I said, who are you? I said, you have, who are you? What have you actually done? So he says, I'm a lawyer. I said, I could have guessed that. I said, I've written books on the subject. Judge Roy Moore is not a fascist. He says, I don't give a damn what you've written. I know what's going on. I said, oh, you know what's going on? What, you're a lawyer, a communist lawyer, so you know everything? Now, you have to understand this far in the conversation, it confirmed everything I've ever known about left-wing lawyers is that they think they know everything. I said, hey, buddy, you're not in a courtroom right now. You don't own the jury. You don't own the judge. You're talking to a stranger, and you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Judge Roy Moore is a fabulous American. So one word led to the other, and as he's getting off, he has to throw a judge. Ju ju you know, I said, you're just a shyster. I said, you're a lawyer? What are you, a shyster lawyer? Is that what you are? That was a loaded statement. I wanted to provoke him. I said, what kind of lawyer are you, some low-grade shyster that you have time to be on a ferry in the middle of the day? He didn't answer me. So as he's getting off, he throws a jibe at me. He says to the deckhand, he says, I guess you have to sell tickets to anyone on these ferries. I said, yeah, even shysters. At which point, I departed the boat. I had to have the last word. I hope he's seething all night long. I hope he had to take a double dose of Prozac at night for having lost the argument because he wasn't in a court of law. What you don't know is this. Most of the biggest liberals in America are actually mentally disturbed. Uh, a friend of mine who knows very big liberals, I'm talking the biggest in the, in, the, in the world, has told me they really don't care. Politically, they don't care one way or the other. They do it to meet girls and to, to make money. I said, I've known that all along. And he said, Michael, you jokingly say liberalism is a mental disorder. He said, almost every liberal I know is on medication. They're mentally ill. I am, I am like America's father. I know that. I become that. I used to be America's uncle.
I have now become a father to millions of people because there are no fathers left, by and large. They're gone. And, and with the attacks upon the world that we believe in, by the vermin on the left, the communists, the socialists, the invaders, uh, it's more important than ever that people support me because I'm one of the last voices left in this country. Uh, it's a strong voice, and I know that, and the voice is strong not because of me but because of God. Listen to me. God has given me this microphone for a couple of reasons, and it's not to enrich myself. God gives me the strength to get up every morning, get myself together, whatever, and get up here and be cogent and speak to the uh, American people who tune in and around the world because there's a reason for it. There's a reason for everything. And when I'm no longer on the radio, it will be because God doesn't want me on the radio. Do you understand that it's all about that? So, 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 so what I'm saying is that caller who called out of nowhere, the Hindu caller, he gave me a revelation. I never knew that these fantastic entities of the elephant with eight, eight trunks or the woman with 12 arms were not idols. He was telling me something I did not know. But as I said, not so jokingly, I've never met a Hindu I didn't like. I have gotten along with Sikhs and Hindus wherever I've met them on the planet. It's that simple. And there's no if, ands, or buts. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You have to die. Thank God I hope he's gone to his reward in hell where he belongs because he was a pornographer by any name. Now, he was a fabulous businessman, but a pornographer nevertheless. He was less graphic than the one uh, who created, what was that called? Larry Flint. Larry Flint came along and upgraded the pornography from the smooth, silk, airbrushed woman to something a little more graphic. Nevertheless, it's pornography. So he said, what's wrong with pornography? Well, let's talk about Playboy. The man affectionately known as Hef created and guided the Playboy brand for half a century, helping to usher in the freewheeling 60s and making a mark on that decade's significant effect on movies, TV, and pop culture. It's only fitting that Hugh Hefner planned to be buried in Westwood Memorial Park next to his fellow mid-century icon of sexual freedom, Marilyn Monroe. Blah, blah, blah. Born in Chicago, Hefner was a writer for a military newspaper while in the U.S. Army, then went to work as a copywriter for Esquire magazine. Determined to create a better publication, he launched Playboy in 1953 for $600. The first issue featuring a nude photo of Monroe was a big hit selling 53,000 issues. Now, this is written on Newsmax, by the way, on Hefner. Providing a counterpoint to the repressive climate of the era, listen to that line, repressive climate of the era. In other words, when a man was a man, when a woman was a woman, when couples basically stayed, mar stayed married, when pornography was considered a crime, when perverts were put in prison, that was called a repressive climate. Have you walked around San Francisco now in the free San Francisco? I did yesterday. You could puke. You need a clothespin on your nose. The bums are everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. They're human rats. That's all I could think of is the human rats laying around in the streets and no one could do anything about it. And if you look at a human rat the long way, not only can you get killed, you could go to jail if you defend yourself. That's a result of the non-repressive climate of San Francisco's backyard. So anyway, here's my feelings. You're asking me what I feel about, about Playboy. You say, eh, what did he really do that was wrong? I'll tell you my position. By creating a fantasy image of women that were not real, it destroyed a lot of men because when they met real women, actual women who were human beings, men were in some ways actually frightened of women, young boys particularly, who used Playboy for a fantasy. Now, you have to understand that human beings are not images in magazines. But when you condition a young boy to think that a girl should be the way the girls were, let us say, portrayed by Hugh Hefner, naturally they're going to be a little shocked to find out that a human being is different 
than a piece of uh, magazine, a magazine uh, a page, right? So I think it's wrecked, it wrecked a lot of boys. It made a lot of boys confused about women, unable to be with women, unable to live with women, unable to relate to women. And what did it do to women as they were uh, objectified and sexualized in Playboy? I'm asking you a simple question. What is Hugh Hefner's true legacy? Is he a hero or is he a villain? Do you think he destroyed or helped marriages? It's a very important question for one reason. He is a cultural icon, and he must be remembered in the proper context, not the way the psychopaths in the legal industry or the PR industry, which controls what you think, tell you to think. All right, I'm through with the NFL for a while. It's so dumb, it's frightening. They're a bunch of ingrates, period, end of story. Don't tell me about a $16 million you know, a victim. I'm sick of it. Just get over it already. Stop with the garbage. Now, number two, I want to talk about Hugh Hefner. He died. Hero or villain? Did he destroy or help marriages? What is his true legacy? I'd like especially to hear from women. Men have one view of it. We heard from one caller who said it actually helped him relate to women. But that was a standard trick of the pornographers of the 60s, which was you showed the women, and then you had a sort of intellectual article scattered throughout so the guy could make believe he was buying it for the story stand the trick you know you're right big fancy article you get the best writers of your time philip roth whatever and they write this long intellectual thing and in the midst of it is just basically porno but meanwhile the guy buying can make believe he bought it for the article but he didn't buy it for the article he went from joke books to stroke books in the, you know in a few years that's what he bought it for come on let's let's stop fooling ourselves here let's not put icing on the cake here why do we have to stick to the normal topics and say nfl now for the rest of our lives i say let the goons go to you know where they belong fire them all don't go to the games turn the game off and leave me alone already with the goons okay that's what martin luther king jr fought for so the 16 million dollar year goon can spit on the flag savage